Fuck. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna show her. After every Grand Slam event, there's always a group of people trying to invalidate the title and make excuses. But what if I have to tell you that every Grand Slam of the last decade has an asterisk? Some Grand Slams have bigger asterisks than others, but none are perfect. So let's start with 2014. Do you guys know anything about this year tennis-wise? Um, uh, didn't Stan Wawrinka win the 2014 AO? He did, and that's where we're starting. Oh, so well, there's an asterisk on this slam for two simple reasons. So first of all, this is a pretty minor one, but Novak did have a break lead in the fifth set of the quarterfinal, and he choked it away because his serve was dog shit at that time. So Vavringa got off there. The obvious one here is that Nadal was injured for the final. I mean, you could see it. He was fucked. He was running on about 50% and he still won a set. I think it's pretty clear that if Nadal, who had just beat Federer in straight sets, was completely healthy, that he would have destroyed Vavringa, like in the 2017 French Open final. Yeah, didn't he like break his back or something? Yeah, but that was from um, all the gay sex of Federer after their semi-final. Uh, those two are like two peas in a pot, I swear. Like, you, you think they're rivals, but behind the scenes, it's like a whole fucking different story. They're holding hands and jerking each other off. And I don't know, wait, to be honest, this is the most important question. Even though this is on a Grand Slam topic, I think what fans want to know the most is, who nuts first? Is it Federer or Nadal? That truly implies who the real goat is for lasting yeah. long. Leave your answer in the comments. And if you don't subscribe, then you're gay. So... Subscribe. And Holger Roon won't be happy with that. Nadal is always um, scratching his asshole and playing with his ass. So I think um, I think it's pretty cool that Federer is the top. So yeah. I'd say he nuts first. Very true. Very true. Yeah. You guys have any more Please. comments on the 2014 AO? All I remember was uh, I was a junior in high school and I watched it and I was rooting for Nadal and he broke his back and I started crying. I was in year seven. Nice. It was my first year of high school and I could not remember one single thing about the Australian Open because I never watched tennis back then. The year would improve um, for Rafael Nadal in June. Uh, Unsurprisingly, Nadal won his 80th French Open. <laughs> the asterisk for this, as with most Grand Slams, is that it's basically been an open secret for years that Nadal likes to inject himself with certain um, interesting drugs. Some some of the, uh, we can see now some of the effects of Nadal's doping. You see his balls don't work, so he just had a baby at uh, 36. His hair is going away. It's another sign. The only sign that does not show is like anger issues. So you'd think guys that are doping would have anger issues, but Nadal does not have any of that. And you know why he doesn't? Because he's gay. Yeah, Correct. He's, gay, he's getting railed. He's getting railed every night by Roger. So he's very happy. I mean, I'm not sure if everyone's seen the post. There's a post where Novak posts. Um, <laughs> he's on a plane with Nadal. If you look at Nadal's face, that the sheer horrorness in his eyes. That's the look of, uh, how can I say it? He's giving you the fuck me eyes. He basically say, hello, my name is Nadal. When I look into your soul, I want to fuck you. It, it's like that. It's very horrifying. Yeah, I know what you mean. And my favorite tournament of the year, Wimbledon. And there's two okay. major things that essentially disqualify Djokovic's title here. One is that in the semifinals, he dodged playing Andy Murray, who had just absolutely fucking bum raped him. <laughs> no, I can't say that. Aaron, Aaron, like, I get I totally get get him, man. You're you're still butthurt. No fact Djokovic did not have to play Andy Murray, who had absolutely destroyed him in straight sets the previous year in the final. And said he got to play Grigor Dimitrov in the semis. And in the final, after Novak had embarrassingly choked uh, a match point and I believe a 5-2 lead in the fourth, Federer was actually up break point in the fifth, but he choked it away. Just like Novak choked away the legitimacy of this title because it's totally fake. Yeah, I mean, anytime you played Dimitrov in the semis, you already know shit's either been rigged or you're about to get a free win. Unless you're like, if you've noticed, like, if you're versing Dimitrov in a Grand Slam, if it's early as round three or four, like, if he's versing a fucking jobber, like, no one, that no one even knows, you know Dimitrov's about to lose. Like, you just know. It's very typical of him. Yeah, he and only... Yeah, all of us in the draw challenge had fucking Dimitrov beating Medvedev. What were we thinking? <laughs> the 2014 US Open. There's a few ways I could try and invalidate Marin Cilic's title here. First of all, uh, Nadal was injured. He did not play this tournament at all. 
and he was the defending champion. Uh, second of all, the scheduling, having Djokovic play first in the major heat in the semi-finals, put him at a huge disadvantage against uh, Nishikori. And we all know from the next year's semi-final of the US Open that Djokovic would absolutely destroy Stilich in the final in this court. But really the main two asterisks here are one, you played Kai Nishikori in a Grand Slam final, and two, you're Croatian. So we know whatever you achieve doesn't count if you're Croatian. I mean, if you talk about Djokovic in the heat, a rebuttal could be he was not eating bread. You know, Djokovic in the heat eating bread, that's the real Djokovic. There have been rumors that Nishikori actually um, took pure powdered gluten and put it into Novak's water. And that affected his abilities as a changeover. But it's Deep never been confirmed. I could see that. I was just going to say, like, the US Open is for legit one time wonders. Like, they, they, they win one Grand Slam, and then they just go on to do fuck all. I, honestly, I think the only way Chilic won that Grand Slam was showing true potential Riz. He Riz the competition. They were all scared of him. Now he doesn't have that Riz anymore. With his unibro. He did Riz yeah. Federer in that amazing semi-final performance. That was so hot. I mean, yeah, that was a tough game. I, I do just want to add, what a shit Grand Slam. Like, I know. I, I don't know how it still exists. That Grand Slam should belongs to a bigger country that actually puts in the effort into the tennis sport community. Nicaragua. Would you classify yeah. that Slam final as like in the same group as the Team Zverev final? I actually think it's even worse because at least Team Zverev like went five sets. This is like a straight set fucking boar fest. Yeah. Nishikori couldn't hit bo- a boat if he fell out of water. No, that's, that's not right. <laughs> He could hit water if he fell out a boat that day. He became Casper Rude for the final. Literally, the Japanese Casper Rude. Literally, a tournament where we were meant to get a fucking Novak Roger final and we end up with fucking Nishikori and Chilich. I know we got that final the next year and we'll get on to that, but still, it's fucking dog shit. It's like our universe was the alternate universe that year. Do you hate when that happens? Yep. Just like what happened in Super Bowl 51. But I won't get into that. Yeah, we don't want to trigger people. All five Atlanta Falcons fans, we don't want to trigger you. Atlanta people are crazy. Well, no wonder they're in Brit. Yep. 2015. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of weak ways that you could try and um, discount Novak's Australian Open title in 2015. But really, I think we all know that um, Vavrenko was injured coming into the fifth set. I mean, these guys have just played three back-to-back classics at the Aussie Open. No in the distance. And you're telling me that Vavrenko suddenly got bageled in the fifth set? He was definitely injured. He was hiding it. And I think uh, just like he'd done the previous year when he owned him, Vavrenko would have totally owned him if he wasn't injured in that semi-final. You don't think he was just getting old and ran out of gas? Yeah, one year older. <laughs> you don't change that much in a year. Well, you do if you stop taking steroids. And speaking of Stan Vavrinka, his illegitimate 2015 Roan Garros style. Uh, now, there's the obvious one that he didn't have to play in the Dow in the final. So, not have to play the Dow in the Roan Garros final. That in itself probably counts for an asterisk. But the main thing is, Djokovic's semi final against Murray was played across two days. So, Vavrinka basically had an, I think he had an extra day of rest coming into the final. So he basically just beat up on a tired opponent who had just played a five-set match across two days. So I really don't think the slam counts. And was that because the French Open doesn't use lights and it just became too dark? It was that or it was rain. I can't remember what delayed the semi-final. I mean, really, it's Novak's own fault because he was up two sets and he lost two sets, seven, five, and then he won the first six, one. But well, you know, we won't talk about that. If you win the last set, you win the match. Thank you, John McEnroe. I have no idea. Thank you. Anything to add on these first two slams? Um, all I know is I was not watching tennis that year. You same, yeah. You, you seem to be the most intelligent one here, knowing all this information. We're just learning from you. I don't blame you as a Rafa fan for not watching 2015. Yeah. Because that sounds like it would have been an absolute fucking hellscape. That was also my uh, freshman year of college, so you already know. Now, these final two slams, uh, both won by Djokovic and both illegitimate, and both by beating old Roger Federer in the final. But if you listen to Federer fans, he was basically a pensioner at this point. You know, he's basically in a retirement home or using a walking stick. You know, he's, he's basically crippled at this point, even though he somehow made these slam finals. Federer, at this point, should not be making slam finals, and the fact that he still is, I think, says more about his opponents than him. Yeah, so when uh, Djokovic had got to play 60-year-old Federer in the final Wimbledon, 
and he didn't have to play Andy Murray, who, as we all know, beat him in straight sets in 2013. And I'm sure he would have took a shit all over him in this final. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Murray's his best year. What was his best year? Was it like 2016? Yeah, but I mean, even in 2015, he was still at a really high level. So he was at like, he was in his prime, right? He was definitely there. In fact, in the very next tournament in Montreal, he beat Djokovic in the final and he ended his ridiculous winning streak in Masters 1000 finals. And I think he absolutely would have beat him in the final here. Yeah, I, I But agree. Djokovic was lucky that 70 year old Federer always seems to get the better of uh, Murray and slams. Do you have anything to add? Uh, nope, not really. It's Novak. But well, what can I say? Yeah, hey, uh, just so I don't feel the back. To... I'm pissing in a bottle as we speak. Good man. I'm hey, just letting you guys know. Hey, 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 yeah. Wait, you're you're pissing into Zverev? Yes. <laughs> By the way, for the 2015 US Open, uh, Federer choked a shit ton of break points. He had something like something ridiculous, like 16 break points, and he only converted two of them the whole match. <laughs> Classic. So again, if Djokovic wasn't playing 80-year-old Federer, then he totally would have lost that match as well. Yeah, for sure. Right, you finish uh, pissing on Zverev and we'll go with 2016. No, I'm, you, you can keep going on, I'm still pissing. Right, 2016. 2016, 2016 is probably my favourite year in the tour. But that doesn't mean the slams didn't have asterisks, because none of these slams count either. So the Australian Open, pretty simple one, Federer had mono. I don't want to hear about, oh, Novak's level was so high that day. I don't give a fuck. I don't care that you've got a Serbian flag in your name and that you tweet Edemo 50 times a day on Twitter. Federer had mono and he was 200 years old. So that doesn't fucking count. The French Open, we all know this doesn't fucking count because he played a Scotsman in the final. No, because Nadal withdrew in the third round. Now, yes, he beat Nadal in straight sets the previous year, but the other two times, the Nadal lost at Roland Garros. You know what he did the next year? He played the same opponent and he beat them. He beat the exact same opponent who'd beat him the previous year in 2010-2022. So I have no doubt in my mind that's exactly what would have happened here. So yeah, 2016 Wimbledon, the simple fact is that Murray didn't have to play Federer in the final. He was incredibly lucky that Federer went down with a season-ending knee injury uh, coming towards the end of his semi-final against Ryanich. And we all know that Federer absolutely owns Murray at Grand Slam level. He owned him in the 2012 final, and there's no doubt he would have beat him again this year. People thought that knee injury was going to be like a career-ending thing for Federer. Well, it was, and he came back pretty strong. Yeah, he came hard. He said. did win three old gym at Slams, as we'll get into, but he definitely did come back. Yeah. And it also helps that the guy that was playing Murray instead of Federer was Milos Reinic. Murray had a 6 nothing record against that year, because his play style basically plays into the hands of Murray, especially in his prime. And we all know how good he was, so that's why he pretty much cruised a straight set final win yeah being a counter pusher against Raonic is like an easy win and also Raonic is Canadian yeah fuck those guys if you know any Canadians tell them to go fuck themselves if you do know any Canadians you know exactly what we're talking about yeah we want you to like and subscribe to this channel so if you're Canadian like the channel now and don't be a prick like the channel and then please never come back <laughs> we just want you for our money that's it and the 2016 US Open we all know this is fake too first of all Vavrinka got extremely lost Lucky when he was match point down in the third round against Dan Evans. Um, Dan Evans was actually completely high off cocaine at this point, so it's pretty obvious that if Dan Evans had been sober, he wouldn't have fucked up that match point. But also in the final, actually, I, actually, I need to go into this in detail because this is probably one of the least talked about chokes in tennis history. The 2016 US Open final, probably because Serbia's uh, deep state media have done such a good job of uh, covering it up. Oh, this is the year Bavrinka won his US Open. Yeah, I think that was it, wasn't it? So the big, the biggest chokes here was at the end of the third set, Djokovic got broken from 30 love up to lose the set for fuck's sake I've confused I've confused this with all that basically, basically the match point is that the asterisk to this slam is that if Dan Evans wasn't high of coke he would have converted that match point and he would have beat him yeah I mean some might argue that cocaine would help him but I don't think it would help him it definitely would not help him. Why do you think he quit? Oh true I mean, he did get banned I don't know when he got banned but uh, Evans I don't know if people I don't know a lot of people that even like Evans I feel like the people that like him are just I was thinking the same thing. Who in their own mind would would like a player like him? He's I can't even say the fucking word because I don't even like him that much. 
Garbage. There we go. Garbage is the word. Looks like a rat as well. Do you think? Uh, do you think Evan's own family likes him? Nah, probably not. That's why he probably he looks like he, who was. He looks like someone that was set up for adoption. He, he looks like his dentist hates him. He's got. He's got like the, he looks like he's on the hunt for cheese. He's, he's got the <laughs> classic uh, Englishman with shitty teeth. Fucking out. If Ratatouille was was a live action movie, he'd be perfect for it. I could make so much jokes about him. That's how much I hate him. I will save that for another video. Save that for OnlyFans. I don't have OnlyFans, unfortunately, but Alexander Muller from France has OnlyFans. Not sure if you saw that in Doha. Yeah, he had the sponsorship on his sleeve. Yeah, he's a horny bugger. All right, uh, 2017 Australian Open. Well, the year 2017 in general was pretty marred by two major things. Uh, Djokovic's elbow and Andy Murray's hit. Uh, basically, the two best players of the previous season were absolute garbage for the entirety of this season, which allowed the path for um, our two favourite boyfriends, uh, Roger Nadal and Rafael Federer, to uh, storm in and win the four asterisk Grand Slams that year. Yeah, and the biggest reason there's an asterisk is because they didn't have to play Djokovic, right? They didn't have to play Djokovic, and also um, they didn't have to play Murray either after a certain point. I think both Djokovic and Murray didn't play a match after Wimbledon in 2017. Damn. And then uh, Roland Garros, what does it mean while Rinka sold? Uh, well, we all know that um, Vavrinka felt so bad for how he uh, demolished Nadal in the 2014 Australian Open final when he was injured. That's, that's nice of him. He's giving back to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. The Make-A-Hair Foundation? Yeah, also going back to the Australian Open final that year, Nadal had a 3-1 lead in the uh, final. Uh, in, the, in the deciding set as well and he just totally choked but then again he was, I'm sure his fans would tell me that he was injured so that doesn't count uh, also the big asterisk for 2017 is that he got to play Croatian in the final so we all know that doesn't count oh my god I'm fucking tired of Croatian people now yeah we should like do something about Croatia yeah we got bombed yeah everyone got bombed at some point yeah, boohoo. Yep. I bomb your mom's pussy, but she doesn't cry about it. Yep, that's oh, true. And the, the US Open that year is probably the most egregious of all. You know how crazy it is to play a Grand Slam main draw, seven matches, and you don't play one player ranked inside the top 20? That's fucked. That's gay. I've never seen anything like it. I didn't even know that was possible. The impossible can always be proven possible. Yes, everything yeah. is possible. You know the saying from Disney, when you... You know, when you wish upon a start, you know, it, it, it's sort of like that. And especially when you look back at that tournament, you know, wishes do come true. If we go to 2018 Australian Open, we got another fucking Croatian in the final. Oh, it's Chilich again, isn't it? Yep, it's Chilich. Oh, fuck. And sake. surprise, surprise, Rafael Nadal got injured. The man has a 3 1 record against Roger Federer at the Australian Open and was up a yeah. break in the first set against him in the final just the previous year. He doesn't have a. Nadal never, doesn't really have a great record at the Australian Open, I kind of noticed from the other big three. He's like, look, he's won like obviously like 40 other Grand Slams. He's improved and done well in. It's the Australian Open where he has least accomplishments there, despite winning it twice. But you've seen what Novak and Federer have done. Well, they are the two most successful players in the history of that tournament. Yeah. And also, um, we all know that secretly Federer and Adele made a pact in 2009 to let each other win the Australian Open and French Open because they could never win them legitimately again in their career. That's the biggest open anyway. secret in tennis history. Nadal has two ah. Australian Opens, but he also has two Wimbledons. But his uh, Wimbledons came in when he was actually trying hard and then kind of sucked dick on grass after 2010. I, to be honest, I thought that was Novak's job. He's always Every time he's winning the fucking championship, he's always pulling grass out of the ground and eating it. He doesn't eat meat, so he needs all the, pro, all the calories he can get. Well, that, that explains it. He's a vegetarian. There you go. Yep. That could also be an asterisk for all of it in Novak's Grand Slams. The 2018 French one was really interesting. I mean, first of all, playing like Dominic Team, who's nine years old in the final, was always going to be an easy win. The really is the fact that if you go back to the match between Nadal and Schwartzman, Schwartzman had Nadal on the ropes. He was up a set and a break. And you know what happened? He it rained away. Okay, that was close and it, was, and it totally threw his momentum off. Even to the point that Lionel Messi, when he met Diego Schwartzman for the first time, that was the very first thing he commented on, was how lucky Nadal was. If the goal of football can see that, I'm not calling it soccer, then I think all of us can see that. And that means this slam doesn't count. Do you think Schwartzman was doing some like 
midget kind of a uh, magic to allow the rain to come? Probably not, because it threw him off. Oh yeah, true. He fucked himself up. All right, Wimbledon had the roof closed versus Nadal. Yeah, this is probably one of the most uh, talked about ones. And to be fair, they do have a point. Like, Djokovic basically begged for about two hours to have the roof closed, even though there was no need to have the roof closed, uh, because he knows how much uh, indoor conditions favour his play style. And considering how close a match it was, I think it's pretty obvious that if Nadal had the favourable conditions, that he would have won. And also, playing Kevin Anderson in the final, who had the most time on court ever in a Grand Slam final. He had just won a semi-final against John Isner, something like 26-24 in the fifth set, something ridiculous. The most boring so match. He basically, yeah, the most boring long match you'll ever see. So he basically beat up on a corpse in the final to win Wimbledon. Well, I mean, Federer's part South African, so Joker had to play one South African. Yeah, especially since he got to duck defending champion Federer in the quarters because uh, Anderson took him out. Yeah, we and all the know. US Open that year is pretty obvious because um, Nadal's beat Djokovic in two finals there. And uh, even though he hadn't won a set against him in hardcore since 2013 at that time, I think we all know that he, uh, he would have found a way to win his third US Open final against him. Was that the year everyone was hoping there would be like the first Nadal versus Federer US Open match and then it didn't happen? Yeah, I think so. I think Federer, Federer lost to Del Potro when uh, they were about to play each other. We look at 2019, Luca Pui was in a slam f- semi-final, which is, should not ever happen. That dude fucking sucks. When you're playing a guy in the slam semi-final whose name you can't pronounce, that grand slam doesn't fucking count. Get that shit out of here. How did he even make it there? Uh, he had a female coach. Oh, okay. Yeah. Appar- <laughs> apparently in this generation, women can do anything, so that, that was the, the reason why he made it. Yeah. But after that, I mean, you have not seen a lot from that guy ever since that shit. Yeah, he had, like, depression... And had multiple injuries, but he's back playing tennis, just not his best form. He doesn't have the injuries, but he's still depressed. Yeah. He's just depressed. He's not in the top 10 anymore. Yeah. Probably. Now he knows how I feel. I got depressed just watching his matches. All right, anyways, uh, let's move on to the next one. Roland Garros. So this is a pretty obvious one. Um, Nadal took a book out of uh, Sissy Pass, who's getting a mention in this video. He took a page out of uh, Sissy Pass's book by taking a toilet break after a team had just won the second set to level the match, to totally throw off his momentum, and inject himself with some questionable drugs, I'm sure. Yeah, he needed a little quickie of some uh, steroids. Yeah, Federer was um, helping him out in the back, in the backstage before going out. Federer injected it into his ass. Like like Taylor Swift says, it's a love story. It truly is a love story. You Even mean Taylor I hate Fritz? that bitch, Taylor Swift. <laughs> No, you mean Taylor yeah, Fritz. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Taylor Fritz. Yeah, he, he, he sung that song, yeah. He definitely sung that song. He's a good singer. 2019 in Wimbledon, I even need to go over this tournament. This has nah, to be the most talked one. about tournament and specifically final in probably tennis and probably across most sports. I'm just so fucking sick of seeing people talk about this final. It was I mean, nearly it was five final. fucking years ago and cunts are still crying about it. No, you know who were, who was crying about it and probably still crying about it? Federer fans. I remember watching that game for my dad. It was an amazing game, by the way. My dad. Um... I remember when Federer, he was up 40-15, was he not? Or well, it was a tie break, and he was about to win. And they showed this fan immediately showing up their fingers. It was um, it was eight, and the number eight, because Federer was about to win his eighth title. We all know what happened from then. Novak, as he does, proves everyone wrong, and proves the doubters wrong. Leading 8-7, 40-15, with two match points, his own serve. Federer flashing an embarrassing forehand wide in the first point. Or Djokovic hit the flukiest uh, passing forehand on the second shot. Well, we can just make an excuse and say that Novak flashed Federer. He whipped it out. Federer got distracted. Federer's approach shot when he got passed on that um, match point was god-awful. He did not hit into the corner. It was. He basically gave it to Novak to do whatever he wanted to do with it. He was totally shitting bricks. Yeah. Also, um, going back to the whole um, the fan that was holding up the uh, the her finger. Um, yeah. Federer is known to celebrate prematurely as he had a cake made to celebrate his 311th week as world number one, assuming that he would beat Porna Choric in, I believe, the Halla final. And uh, he, lost, he lost the world number one ranking and he never gained it again. He spent 310 weeks at number one in his career, but he celebrated a 311th week that never happened. Losing to a Croatian. 
Yeah, losing to Croatian as well. Talk about embarrassing. I mean, it's incredible to think that Federer always got a game on, on Chilich, but he couldn't beat Borna Chorich, which is quite sad. Well, you know, it's like, Chilich is he's Croatian, but he's more he's more like Mr. Bean. He's a fake Croatian. This dude's got a unibrow. I'd always thought Bodic Vanish Zanschla was always Mr. Bean. You know, he shows up one season, and then he just starts playing like a clown. Oh, if we're talking about clowns, we got to leave that for the French guys. For Benoit Paire and oh, yeah. Hugo Gaston. Mutet as well. Wait, who? You mean Mutet? Oh, Mutet. Yeah, that's what I 100% said. Yeah, Mutet. I definitely didn't say it wrong. Yeah, Mutet. Mutet is nuts in your mouth. It sounds like you're uh, saying mutated. Yeah, I mutated all over your mum's face. How about that? All right, all right. This is a family show. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Family friendly, guys. Let's 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 keep the program going. Aaron, stop being inappropriate. <laughs> yes, I was fucking this. I was fucking this prostitute last night. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what's the next yeah. one? 2019 US Open. I mean, first of all, Djokovic getting injured against Pavrinka in the fourth round as defending champion it ended not only his tournament but the legitimacy of Nadal's title. But also, um, Nadal did not play a top 20 player again until the final. And at 2-2, with Nadal having break point in the fifth, Medvedev hit a serve, but Nadal held up his racket, saying he wasn't ready, even though he clearly was. So Medvedev had to retake the serve. So he basically cheated to give himself a chance in the break point. You know, that was the year that I went to the US Open. So I saw Nadal that year. I thought he was up to no good. Did you see any syringes laying around in the bathrooms? I did, actually. I saw some around his bag, around his name, on his locker. They gave me a tour. I walked around, saw some dildos around uh, his Varev section. But the main thing was in the tour, Nadal had syringes. He had powder. He had all kinds of bullshit around his locker. Did you, um, did you hang out with him? No, I didn't hang out with him. I wish I could, but uh, he was not into me. I think he uh, he's into Swiss ah. white men. I think he was a little busy that year. Yeah, you know, if he ever discovered this channel, that would be quite interesting. If Nadal, I would love see. to have Rafael Nadal on for an interview, so we could badly translate something he said about uh, Djokovic oh, and get yeah. one we, billion we did, likes. Like during that entire interview, if we ever got one, the moment he starts speaking Spanish. All I'm going to say is, you know, that it, it, it's like when you're speaking to someone that can't even speak English, it speaks a different language, I'm going to be that one guy that says, speak English, so we get a better fucking understanding, and get a better interview. No, I'm not English. Ask Nadal how to pick up women, because I'm single. He has that Spanish riz. Well, he's gay, he doesn't know how to pick up women. Oh, right. It's, well, I, his wife's just a cover-up, didn't you know this? Pretty much. I'm just discovering this shit now, I, I'm just learning. I'm, I'm embracing this news in sheer shock. I, I can't believe it. I, I think I might end it all just from hearing that. I, I can't believe it. 